If measuring bump steer makes your brain hurt, this video is for you. It's not complicated, but it's kind of tedious. I've done it too many times to count, so I'll show you some shortcuts. For this video, I'm using a bump steer gauge from Maximum Motorsports. It's simple, inexpensive, and it works great. We're measuring bump steer on a Mustang Cobra IRS before installation, but you can use this method for the front as well, and, this, and the suspension doesn't have to be out of the car. Having the suspension out of the car is just easier to show you what's going on. First, you want to make your reference point, or zero hub position, ride height. Since the suspension is out of this car, we'll just set our zero hub position to when the lower control arm is level. Set the rest of the gauge up per the maximum motorsports instructions. They're pretty good, so just follow them. This is also important. Get the toe and camber close to what you'll think you'll be running after you're done. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close, and symmetrical from side to side. Camber angle and tie rod length will affect the shapes of the bump steer curves. Jack up the hub to maximum bump travel. It's important that at every measuring step you make sure the hub board is level. This equalizes the measurements on either side of the board and makes sure that it's the same from one measurement to the next. Then zero the dial indicator. This will save you a bunch of time, so listen up. There's no need to painstakingly measure each spacer stack change. Instead, use the floor jack to slowly let the suspension move down to maximum droop and watch the dial indicator. If you pay attention, you'll notice a pattern in the dial indicator's movement. Start changing spacer stacks and repeat the process. Once you've found a spacer stack height that minimizes needle movement between 2 inches of bump travel and 0, or ride height, then you're in the ballpark. Then you can start fine-tuning the stack with exact measurements. When you're ready to fine-tune the spacer stack, use this spreadsheet. It's on my website. Just visit the link in the description for the Excel file. Sneak up on each hub height position and make sure the hub board is level. Record the measurements from the dial indicator. You'll notice as you're taking measurements that once you get to zero, then the other measurements will reference zero going forward for your chart. Take a look at the graph when you're done. It may look something like this. But what does this mean? The goal would be a perfectly straight vertical line, but that's not going to be possible. You can change the shape of the bump steer curve by changing the heights of the spacer stack. Use the following illustrations as a guide on which direction to move with your spacer stack. Keep in mind that if the tie rod is behind the hub, the results will be the opposite as if the tie rod is in the front of the hub. This means the direction that you move with your spacer stack height will be the opposite on the front of a Mustang versus on the rear of a Mustang with an IRS. It's also possible that your bump steer curve looks like a C rather than a straight line. If this is the case, it means the tie rod is either too long or too short to produce a straight bump steer line. If your toe setting is pretty close to what you're going to be running, there's really nothing you can do about this other than redesigning the suspension to change the tie rod lengths. That's not going to, that's not going to happen. Regardless, this isn't a big deal. I just want to mention it so that you understand why some curves look like a C. Unless you're extremely lucky or working on like a Formula One car or something, your bump steer curve isn't going to be perfect. You're going to need to compromise. I'd prioritize minimizing bump steer in the first inch or two of bump travel and sacrifice unsavory bump steer behavior elsewhere. Here's an example. See how the first part of the bump travel is pretty minimal. It's in droop where it goes far. But that's less important in corners because a wheel that's in droop doesn't have a lot of load on it, so it really doesn't matter that much. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out.